guys and welcome to part two of the PNY GTX 1060 review. What we're going to be going over in this review is uh, comparing it to my Asus Strix GTX 970 and also comparing them both overclocked to each other. Now one thing that I want you guys all to pay attention to is the overclock 970 versus a stock 1060. Because Nvidia is advertising the GTX 1060 6GB as the power of a 980. And what we saw when the 970 and the 980 released was that you could overclock 970 and make it pretty much the same performance level as the GTX 980. So we're going to go over some benchmarks real quick. We'll try to do a rapid fire here, keep this video quite a bit shorter than part one. And then we'll move on over to a conclusion and I'll tell you whether or not I can recommend the GTX 1066 gigabyte at its price or at least on its sale price. Now onto the stock and overclock settings that should be popping up on your screen now. Overclocking was done using MSI Afterburner Beta, something or other, Beta 4 I believe. These are the max overclocks at the stock voltages. My Asus Strix 970 at stock had a boost of 1316.3 MHz on the core. And for an OC I ended up with plus 185 on the core and plus 450 on the memory, which is a pretty nice memory increase. You'll see that also happens on the PNY card. Both of them are using Samsung memory, which turns out to be insanely tweakable. What this translates to on the Asus Strix is a max boost of 1501.3 and in terms of percentages it is a 12% boost in the core speed and a 22% increase in the memory. Now onto the PNY GTX 1060. At stock the 1060 had a max boost of 1885.5 and for the overclock I was able to go 188 on the core and plus 650 on the memory. And what this translated to was a max boost of 2062.53 on the core and a memory of an effective speed of 9.3 gigahertz. This was a 9% increase in the core speed and a 28% increase in the memory speed. And I was actually playing on the 1060 at plus 800 on the memory. Someone, I think using liquid cooling, if they haven't already, is going to be able to hit 10 gigahertz on these cards. Now a couple things to note before we get to the benchmarks is that I used stock fan profiles for the stock settings and when I overclocked I used a custom fan profile, something I would essentially recommend for even if you're not overclocking. To start our benchmarks off we'll head to Tomb Raider 2013. In Tomb Raider 2013 you can see that it overclocked 970 beats the stock 1060. This is going to end up being a pretty consistent thing going forward. With that being said and the results being consistent, to cut on time I decided to cut away the minimum and maximum so that I could show the next two games in the same chart. Here we see Bioshock and Metro 23 Last Light Redux. Once again you can see the overclock 970 beats the stock 1060. And like I said before this is a lot like a GTX 980 versus 970 where a well overclocked 970 would easily beat a 980 stock. Heading over to synthetic benchmarks we'll start with Unigen Valley. And not surprisingly, an overclocked 970 beats the stock 1060. You can see, of course, when I overclock the 1060 in all of these benchmarks, it handily beats it once again. But it's good to keep in mind that there's a large price difference between a used 970 now that could still be under warranty versus buying a brand new GTX 1060. Now we head to the Fire Strike benchmark, in which I was not surprised to see the overclocked 970 beat the stock 1060 at the normal mode in 1080p. However, it was surprising to me that it beat it as well in 1440p, the extreme version, and 4K. The reason this surprised me is because you're comparing two cards that one of them, the 970, has 3.5 gigabytes of memory, and then uh, 0.5 of really slow memory or whatever, and then the 1060 has 6 gigs, so it's almost like it's double the amount of memory. So I thought at 4K, you definitely see a difference, and I thought maybe the 1060 would pull ahead. However, in this particular benchmark at least, that's not the case. Finally, in 3 Mark Time Spy, a DX12 benchmark that's going to leave the overclocked 970 a little bit lower than the stock 1060. This at least indicates that Nvidia has done some of their homework with the 1060 regarding DirectX 12, and it wouldn't be a shock if this translates into other games with DirectX 12 or Vulkan. Now, some notes after all these benchmarks is I also play Fallout 4, and I usually use a texture mod or two, which uses quite a bit of uh, video memory. One thing I noticed while using the 970 even OC'd is that it's dropping below the VSync of 60 that I have it set to, and the 1060 does that much less. So what I'm saying here is that situationally, that 6GB will make a difference, and that's something that you have to keep in mind 
against any 4 gigabyte card or 3 gigabyte card. Now let's finally look at how the temps went in the stock and overclock profiles and how the fans ramped up when it got hot. First thing to note is that neither card hit a thermal limit so there's no reason to throttle at either stock or overclock settings. The Asus Strix 970 fans are quieter but the 1060 fans on the PNY are definitely not obnoxious to me. You can see they barely ever grace towards 60% anyways. Max temps that I recorded were using stress tests like the Firemark stress test. It's also fair that both cards have had the thermal pace replaced with Arctic MX4. And the 970 Strix has gotten my VRM mod, which you should be able to look up that video in a couple days. So they're both thermally very well set up to do a good job even in these overclocks. I was kind of surprised to see the 1060 overclock didn't increase the temps as much. Uh, that could have perhaps been due to the custom fan profile, however it wasn't really ramping up that much past what it was stock. Really what my fan profile was effectively doing was when the card powered down, I wanted it to keep running those fans until it actually got back down to its idle temperature because otherwise they would both want to just slow their fans way down or even stop them when it hit 40 something degrees and I, I want it to go all the way back down to its idle temperature or very close to it so under 40 somewhere is where I want the fan to stop. Okay guys so on to the conclusion here. Do I think that this PNY GTX 1060 is worth it at the 250 MSRP and what about the sale prices versus my 970? Well it obviously depends on situation. If you're only going to be gaming at 1080p there are lower budget solutions that are available to you that you will not see much of a difference between this, this 1060 6 gigabyte and those cards for probably quite a bit less money. I think looking at a GTX 970 used from EVGA, MSI, or Gigabyte, someone who's going to continue giving you a warranty based on serial number is probably worth it to a lot of people. You could probably snag one for 160 something like that. What you're getting for a 40 or $50 difference is a 5 or 10% difference in stock and overclock basically, and better drivers and uh, newer support for DX12 and Vulkan and whatever new API they decide to roll out. And another thing to consider for the new cards is that they use quite a bit less power than the previous generation cards. But for those of us who do game pretty heavy and want to always have consistent frame rates that are above 60, this 1060 is much more worth it compared to other 1060s. You don't need extra fans, you don't need a backplate. If you need it to look cool, well you gotta pay for it to look cool. The cooler is more than adequate with three heat pipes, even though it doesn't have a direct contact, considering it's only a 120 watt card. During normal gaming sections, I could never hear the PNY card over my stock system fans anyways, so it doesn't run hot and it doesn't consume a ton of power. I wouldn't pay more for a 1060 considering it's essentially just a 980 in terms of performance. I think finding this PNY GTX 1060 on sale for around 210, 220 is an acceptable deal. It's not the bee's knees, it's not the best ever, but it is performance that's very good for its price. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and leave a comment. You can leave a dislike as well, but go ahead and let me know why you didn't like the video. Now what you can see behind me is going to be my upcoming video, which is going to be a build. It's also going to be featuring the fan LED guide. So go ahead and keep tuned into this channel, subscribe, and I'll